We say there's two sides to a coin when it comes to investments. There's risk and there's return. Someone's invested a million, they lose just 10K. The guy goes crazy. In a money market fund, if you had 10K as your initial investment and you've topped up every month 10, another 10K, so what will happen is within your first five years, you'll have about, with no withdrawals, you'll have about 820,000. Why, why don't you teach these things in school? Why don't you teach these things in school? Because why am I, why am I knowing this in my mid-30s? For me, investment chama makes sense. Right? A chama to British troops, that's money you'll eat. After three months, you're like, it is now my time to eat. <laughs> you really poor, eh? I've been sacrificing I've been too much. Sacrificing too much. <laughs> How do you determine between a good country to invest in versus a poor country? Welcome back to Manspective Africa, where we have conversations about men, men and money, men and relationships, and men and different issues, man. Make sure you're uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel, which is Manspective Africa. You can get us there. And on KTN Home every single Wednesday from 10 p.m. Silence is golden, speech is silver. I am the golden voice, God's son, Cheat on Lovu. My name is Danny Shodongo, a.k.a. the son of Kano. And today we are having experts from NABO Capital this episode is coming live from uh, Two Rivers Mall. And it's such a fantastic conversation. You can give us your feedback. Manspective Africa is the hashtag. There's an SMS line going there. You can follow us on our personal social media handles, Chiton Glovu, Danny Shodongo. And today we have an expert. I think he's a Gen Z or a millennial. But it's such a big title. Such a big title. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So tell us what you do. Yeah, my name is Charles Miano. I'm a is Miano your real name though? Yeah, it's Miano. Like, yeah. a, like it's your real name? Yeah, yeah. Like, if you, put, like if you sent me a hundred K on Mpesa, it's going to come Charles Miano. Yeah, it's going to come Charles Miano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I work as a portfolio manager at Nabo Capital. Nice to be here and uh, looking forward to our conversation. Are you you're a millennial though? I'm a millennial though. You're a millennial, bro. I'm a millennial. I'm a 93 born man. Are you from here? <laughs> ah, I was like, okay. I was like, we're about to, we're about to be the lead over here. <laughs> but I can turn Gen Z real fast without this beard. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all Gen Z. I think every millennial is a Gen Z at heart. Exactly. Gen Z at heart, millennial by year of birth. So, I mean, when we talk about investments, I think investment is a very big word. It's an, a big word in terms of it's been made to appear to be a big word. When you think of investment, you think of a building, you know, a building with 20 floors. You think of 20 million. You think of the Gava saying we're investing 1 billion into this and this and this. What's an investment? Basically, simply, an investment is anything that generates money for you. It's money working for you. It's just that simple. It's whatever income, whatever capital that you have that generates money for you. If you look at businesses, what's the entire uh, premise of a business? It's I'm putting money into this business. I'm going to sell some goods. I'm, if it's a kiosk, for example, I'm going to sell these goods. I'm going to generate a profit that's going to put money in my pocket. If I start a company, I'm going to provide this service. And then at the end of the day, there's going to be some profits from there. And then I'm going to pay myself as an investor or an owner dividends, which again comes to my pocket. So it's basically money working for you. And how you can look at that is, first of all, in terms of what are you looking to get out of this investment? And I think that touches on a core principle around Nabu Capital, around goals. Very important to understand your goals. And everyone has different goals. And that's why investment is for everyone. And those goals can vary quite a bit, you know. And uh, so again, it's understanding one, everyone wants money um, to generate their money for them. Because how long can you really be active in terms of when you retire? Our retirement age is around 60 years. So what are you going to do after that? For others, you have that fire of movement where you want to, uh, it's financial independence, where you want to retire early. You've heard of guys who want to retire by age 30. Yeah. So that means you really have to sort of save up some amounts and allocate that. So that's how I would define investments is money working for you. All right. And you said you're a portfolio manager. That sounds like a, a big thing fast. So I need to tell us what you do, 
on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, what, where, which schools do you go to? to, to <laughs> I'm a portfolio manager. <laughs> what do you do? Is that exactly. portfolio school? <laughs> portfolio <laughs> studies. <laughs> you have a business that a, a bachelor's a bachelor in portfolio, portfolio studies. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I can tell you my background. Yeah. Um, so I joined I joined Strathmore University in 2012. And I pursued a degree called uh, Bachelor of Business Science in Finance. Nowadays, it has a more fancy name of financial engineering. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you, got, you got a road deal. You got, yeah, got, so got, you got a road deal. <laughs> so you got no degree is it in Bachelor in Business Science. Yeah, in finance. But the uh, Gen Z's now, yeah. that's his financial Shall engineering. engineering. So yeah. That sounds like a serious I'm a financial thing. engineer. <laughs> exactly. Sounds fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, then. And then now, then join Nabu Capital. I joined from an internship position. And through that, I've grown to now where I'm at at portfolio management level. And I think on my day-to-day -day basis, what I look at is investments coming uh, from, uh, from our clients. And our clients have various needs or various goals that they're trying to achieve. So my job in that case is, say, you give me a million shillings and you say, I want to generate out of this in the next five years, I want to generate an income of 100K every month in the next five years. So my job is to determine how do I allocate this a million across the various investment classes. So just to break it down what investment classes are, there is fixed income. So this fixed income, you're familiar with bank deposits, yes. uh, you're familiar with bonds or government bonds. And then you have equities. Equities is now shares or investment in the NSE, for example, where you invest, say, in a stock like Equity Bank or Safaricom. And then there's also investments in real estate that, um, um, that also generates income. So then from all those aspects, you determine out of those three ways the investor base suited to invest. And something that we take into account is one, what type of return you want to receive. As much as everyone thinks they want high return, mm -hmm. there is a flip. Uh, we say there's two sides to a coin when it comes to investments. There's risk and there's return. For for potentially high return, you get your higher risk. If you want, if you're a low risk person, then you typically will get a moderate to low uh, return. But again, it's good to know yourself. We all think we are high risk until you <laughs> you lose our money. Uh, you know, we have clients who they want to invest in equities and it's moving up quite well. And then they lose, just someone's invested a million, they lose just 10K, mm -hmm. the guy goes crazy. Mm -hmm. So now it's good for you to understand, can you tolerate that level of volatility? And so at the end of the day now for that job, it just entails allocating that capital and ensuring that you meet the needs, the requirement and the objective mm -hmm. of the client. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh wow, so then we have these different investment classes. So your job then is the guy who says, put this money here, I'm just trying to make it as, put this money here, put this money here, put this money here. So you're the guy who decides where all of our collective money goes to. Yeah. yeah. So if we, if we are, if me and him don't know each other, but I've got 20, he's got 20, it's now 40 million. So you are the guy who decides where this 40, not 2020 goes to. Wow. That's an interesting thing to it do. Is, it is. It's a very, to have like a deck of 18 so how many, billion, yeah. 18, 18 <laughs> billion and now <number. laughs> <laughs> then you decide, okay, take 2.5 billion here. Okay, yeah. Take 3.5 billion here. Take so like in billion. the movies, do you have like five computers around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the movies they usually have, when you watch like Wall Street, yeah, yeah. you have like 10, 9, are you one of those okay, guys? I like only have speed. two, but... <laughs> I have two screens next like, to you. Or like yeah, Iron yeah, Man. Yeah, you know, my laptop numbers. and then the main screen over there. <laughs> but I've seen the ones on Wall Street movies. Yeah. Yeah. You see those movies? Yes. Like, like seven, eight. <laughs> so are you... The, how is your pressure like? Yeah. Do you have high blood pressure, bro? Because I mean, how how much how much money are you handling right now? So, um, so overall for Nabo, we are managing over fifteen billion in assets. Where? Yeah, yeah. So, how is your pressure like? Like, what's your blood pressure level like? Do you do you jog? Like, what do you do to stay alive, bro? Like, I have many questions. The good thing within uh, Nabo, we have a good team okay. within the investment. So. Uh, I have, uh, we, uh, so we have our CIO and then we see the chief investment officer. Okay. Then you have the portfolio managers. And, f and then below that, you have now the analysts who support in the research. Oh. Because again, it's finding those ideas entails a bit of research, yes. finding those opportunities. Because yes. 
we look not beyond Kenya. Yeah. We, Kenya is part of it, oh. but, but also we look at Africa. So we are one, uh, one of the very few that invest across Africa. So that again requires a lot of uh, time, requires a lot of study, requires a lot of research. But yeah, it can be stressful sometimes. Yeah. It can be stressful. So do you have like a stress ball? Because <laughs> you know, I'm just, there's a, the image you have of a financial, I'm like, this guy manages for, he's always on a stress ball like this with a phone call. Talking, At what? We've lost how much? How much has gone? I used to have like a fidget spinner, you know those ones? Yes, like yes, I remember fidget spinners. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the ones that you clutch, you know those yes. ones for the yeah, forearms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to have one of those. Yeah, yeah. I still have one uh, like on my desk. Just any time again. <laughs> yeah, you need one. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be thinking about so like example giving. If we're looking at an African investment, are things like Uber part of African investment? Uber. Yeah, like Uber, the business Uber itself, or is that totally Western? I mean, yeah, that's Western because it's listed in the US, mm -hmm. but can be an example that we can use. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then, so so in Africa, so we're looking at like you guys are investing. So you're, one of, you're looking at South Africa, you're looking at Uganda, you're looking at TZ, Rwanda. Nigeria and all these different places. So if I bring my money to you, I have an opportunity to make money from these other spaces as well. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So do I, do I have control over where that money goes? Amma, you will inform me or you just say, us will, this, these are the, the investment options we are giving you and these are the returns. Or is that your discretion that doesn't have, I mean, the client does not know as long as they, return, they get their returns? So there's two ways to go about it. We have certain type of investors who, who want to be involved in the decision making. Before you allocate my money, please let me know. Uh, you've decided that we're going to invest in Uganda. And what specifically, let's say you're investing in the Ugandan bonds. Mm. So you need to tell me um, why have you chosen Uganda and why is it better than, say, investing in Kenya? For others, it's I want a certain return. Mm. Just give me 15 and I'll be happy. I'll mm. sleep at night well. Don't tell me if I don't need to know if it's in Nigeria. I don't need to know if it's in Egypt. I don't know if need to know it's in Kenya as long as it's, uh, I get my 15%. But something really important that we consider uh, within the investment is something we call the IPS limit. So what IPS is, is an investment policy, policy statement. Mm -hmm. So what this breakdown is, it gives you an allocation breakdown mm -hmm. of when you initially engage uh, an investor, is how much percentage of a certain asset can I invest in? So it guides the portfolio manager in saying, for example, Let's say I have 10 million as an investor, and I'm saying I'm a bit of a moderate risk person. I, I'm comfortable with some equities, but not too much. So I, I'm comfortable with 20% of my allocation in equities. Yeah. So as a portfolio manager, you will not allocate above the 20% for this client. And then they'll say you can invest 80% in bonds or government securities, but 20% you can allocate into equity. So now you have to fall in line with that expectation of the client around those limits. And majority of our clients have, are within those IPS limits. For some, I invested in what we call umbrella funds or unit trust. I think that's where most people are familiar, like money market funds, yes. fixed income funds. And those are good, especially when you're starting off your investment and you're growing your portfolio. And then now you allocate to those particular umbrella funds because it's I'm bringing your money, my money. So I'm bringing 1,000 from one client. I'm bringing 10,000 from our client, 1 million. So the pool grows to say a billion shillings. And then now from that, we, it has one um, limit allocation yeah. that's also guided by um, our regulator as well. So that's how we look at it by investor. Yeah. And so then we are doing all these things. You're trying to figure out did you, you had to learn this when you started interning here. Is this one of the things that you learned off the job or if for somebody, because I mean, I, I find interesting when you talk about the role you do. I'm sure there's somebody who's probably watching and is like, I'd like to do something like this guy. This sounds exciting. Is it something you were taught school-wise or did you have to then come here also and then really put a lot into your practical? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, I usually say like experience beats uh, education all the time, you know, yeah. and uh, so the school... What school taught us is the basics of finance in terms of understanding the numbers. But when it comes to now understanding the environment itself, you just have to, uh, you have to be in that space. So I do think that through 
starting off as an intern graduate trainee and then going to analyst position and through that process, that's where you get to understand, oh, there are various markets that people invest in. There are good markets. How do you determine between a good country to invest in versus a poor country? Uh, not things you can uh, directly learn in school. So through those experiences, through engaging with clients, through uh, engaging with the market participants, so you're engaging with uh, guys in government, you're engaging with people who own companies, people who manage these companies that you invest in. And uh, even there is a larger community within the investment space. So for us as Nabu Capital, we are asset managers. And then we're also supported by the brokerage community. So there's a whole, uh, which have many players. Then you have investment banks, you have the regulator. So there's a whole uh, ecosystem around it. So those interactions help now for an individual sort of grow within that space. So I want us to get, as you're getting, I'm sure I want us to get more technical a bit. No, no, no. I want us now to get off the air and come <laughs> down properly now. Because you're a layman, you know. Yeah. So you talked about investment classes. So for me, as somebody who says like a layman, I may not have access to Nabo Capital. So if you're to tell me about the investment class and to think about what are what are these investment classes? Yeah. So I think it's I think anyone can get into investments nowadays through technology, financial innovation, the apps through, you can get into, you can invest as little as a hundred shillings when you're starting to invest. Uh, for example, we partner with uh, a company called Shums and they allow people to enter apps and uh, join through that. But when you look at these investment classes, um, I think what I mentioned initially is very important. One, just knowing what type of risk person you are. So really understanding the younger you are, the more risky you can take things. Um, typically, if you're between your 20s to your 40s, then you can, you, you can take a bit of more risk. And there, are, most investors should look at in, uh, investing in things that grow your capital. Equities, which are investing in shares, grow your capital over time. And uh, if you look at the returns that certain equities have made since they were listed, you're sort of compounding, you know, and uh, and so the, I'd say if you're young, relatively young, you, you'll have a high risk tolerance and therefore equities could be a good option for you to grow over time. Uh, if you have moderate risk, in this case, you can look at investing in bonds, you can look at investing in fixed income funds, money mark, uh, fixed income funds, which again, uh, grow your investment moderately, you won't get a significant high return, but you will grow uh, sort of within, I'd say, I know, 10 to 15 percent thereabout historically. And then now if you're, if you're, I'd say, if you're someone who's looking at uh, uh, sort of you're near that retirement, you don't want to take too much risk. You don't want to blow, uh, blow what you've made over those years you've worked. And therefore now you should consider an asset class within sort of uh, like a money market fund where you invest in T-bills, you invest in bank deposits um, and those type of investments. You're given at least a better return than one should earn, uh, just uh, sort of keeping your money in the bank. And the idea is again, looking at what's the best opportunity for you to invest. And we call it something, we talk about something called opportunity cost. Anytime you're making a decision is if I have 10,000, where do I put this 10,000? Uh, and if I do put this 10,000, say, in a money market, what am I forfeiting? What am I losing out? Mm -hmm. Whatever you're losing out is the opportunity cost. Sometimes you don't have a really good opportunity cost because uh, you could be like, I have a million, I've made a million, and I invest in land, for example, which, again, is an asset class within the real estate space. But what's your intention of that land relative to say you could have invested that in a government bond mm -hmm. earning over 15 percent returns yes. right so again you uh, are you losing out because there's this thing called a rule of 72. so the rule of 72 is to help you understand is how long it takes to double your money and so you take 72 you divide by the interest rate so so if i'm if i'm earning 10 percent uh, I divide 72 divided by 10, 
it'll take me about seven years roughly to double my money. So if I had a million and I put in an investment at 10%, it'll take me seven years. If I had, say, 15%, uh, take me about four or five years to earn your investment. So again, uh, for most people, when they invest say, in real estate they are, or land specifically, they're looking perhaps to double their investments in the next 10 years. But, say, but now you see in a simple money market fund giving you say 10%, you'll have doubled your money already uh, in seven years, less time than you invested in that real estate. So again, you have to think about What's my opportunity cost? Okay. Yeah. I like so, the opportunity cost. And, and I like when we said introducing terms that I think we need to explain a bit more. When we talk about T-bills, we talk about money market funds. What's a T-bill? You know, uh, we're talking about bonds. What's a bond? Shares. What are shares? You know, I think let's define some of these terms because that's probably, you, you just want to make it as clear as we can. Yeah. No problem. So I can start with what, T-bills and treasure and T-bonds are. Yeah. So T-bills are treasury bills. Yes. These are issued, these are uh, securities. Mm. So securities just, uh, you can call it a piece of paper or uh, something that is an uh, instrument that is issued by the government. Mm. So that is less than one year or, or one year maximum. Okay, that's a T-bill. T -bill. That's less a than one year or one year. Yeah. yeah. So I have a hundred K, I've given the Gava a hundred K. They told me they'll give me back with 15% interest. Yeah. So they're giving me back 115 K. Yes. So I've given them, after one year, I've gotten back my hundred principal and plus the 15 K. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. So now we go to the next level, which is treasury bonds. Mm -hmm. So treasury bond is uh, security issued again by the government, but now this is greater than one year and they vary across. They vary to as much as we currently have a 25 year bond in the market um, to a two year bond. So depending again on how long you want to invest, you get a, you get a certain interest rate. So if you invest say 100K and uh, you uh, at 50, uh, say 18%, so you're getting 118,000 uh, by the maturity, but what you're really getting is you're getting 18% every year until you, until the maturity date of that bond. So you're getting an 18K every single year yeah. split in six months, six months. Six months yes. So this six months, 9K, after another six yeah. months, another 9K, okay. till 25 years are done. Yeah. Perfect. So that's the But you, your principal is stuck for 25 years. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, your principal remains with the government, for, and they pay you at maturity date with the last coupon. Yeah. So after 25 years, you get your 118k <laughs> now you as get the your, final one. Yeah, you'll get now divided by two. So you'll get your your final one will be 109. Yes. 109. And, but they give yeah. you back. This is what yeah. you gave us, yeah. Shika. You've got a 9k, mm. but you've been getting 18k, 18K every, every year, year for 25 years. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. For 25 yeah. years, you've been getting 18K years. every single year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you can actually reinvest this 18K you can back, reinvest. back to that, back you, to the T-bond. You can, you can reinvest uh, because now government also has monthly auctions in which now you can, re they pay you the coupon, but now you can reinvest in other opportunities as oh, well. Oh, not the one, not, not the one that you've signed for 25 years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. But if I buy, but uh, with a bond, if I buy from you guys, mm. there's a way you can add it to it yeah so if it's a infrastructure bond for like 18 mm. percent and i wanna i've got in mind for one mic mm. and then i want i like talking in millions by that point. <laughs> <laughs> 100k <laughs> on a common a tessa son a tessa king <laughs> i have talking millions <laughs> so if i've got it for that one million and then let's say it's given me back my 180k in fact minimum you can invest is 50k right yeah. so that 150k or that 180 see i can give it back to you guys and you can add it to it yeah, or we can invest it in it. Yeah, so if you have now an asset manager uh, who's prof a professional asset manager investing on your behalf, now they can add to it. Yeah. So you know you don't have the worries of you paid that one eighty k for your one million investment, and you don't really need that money at the moment, yeah. but you want to reinvest it. So do I go back to the market and see what is government issuing? What's, can I get another bond similar to that? But now you leave it up to sort of the asset manager to allow you, you to still grow your, uh, your investment uh, without that stress. And let's talk about the advantage and the disadvantage of getting it through you uh, as an investment firm, as opposed to going, because I mean, you can walk to 
the central bank themselves mm. and you can buy the you bond. Can buy bond you can get it for yourself and yeah. you can go and do that you can stand over there in fact if you if you ever get a chance to go to see the guys who are buying bonds you'll be very surprised you realize that in kenya we don't know what most people don't know there's a certain number of people who go there mm. if you see the guys who are there mm. money you will realize you need to learn more about your money you need mm. to learn more about these things but so then what is the advantage of coming to you instead of going to buy directly from the from the government I think one is uh, we have economies of scale. Okay. So we have uh, we have Chito Dongo or, and a thousand other people coming in and wanting to buy the same bond at varying amounts. You'll have one guy with a million, another guy with a hundred k. So if you're buying through us, one of the benefits is through that economies of scale, we can get a better rate because now we understand the market and we understand now say. Days when the government does a let me just take you through that auction process yes. maybe so the government raises money every week through treasury bills right so they issue treasury bills every week and every month they issue certain bonds that they're looking to raise money from uh, so the basically government is borrowing from the people and so when they're issuing these bonds it goes through an auction system where they will say we are raising money for a 10 year bond so it's up to now the investor or the uh, in this case the investment manager to determine what rate is most suitable for this tenure. So then, for many bonds, some they will tell you what the rate is. The government will say, "Hey, we're raising this bond at uh, say 15 percent." So you already know the rate that is coming in. For many parts, the government doesn't tell you what rate. It's up to you guys to go to an auction. It's almost like a secret auction where all of you don't know the price of what the price of the good will be. So the idea is, can you get the highest rate you can? The thing is, if you go too high, the government rejects. You, uh, they reject your bid. If you get too low, you're losing out. So for us, uh, given that uh, uh, we're able to determine what type of rate to come in, uh, just based on you know being in the market, our research, our engagement with the different market participants to get a fair level of where the rate will be. So that's something, if you go as an individual, you might not have that full information of knowing what rate to go with. And again, I touched up on economies of scale where now instead um, uh, you can still get value with that small amount of money that you do have. For someone within our fixed income fund, for example, uh, someone can invest uh, uh, as little as, um, even less than 100K, for example, and still be able to get exposed to some, uh, some let's say, infrastructure born through the fund that will have had a minimum, say, of 100,000 uh, with the central bank. So that's a benefit. And I think the third one that is the biggest benefit is, let's give an example. You've invested in a 10-year bond. You're happy you're earning a 17%. However, things turn sour, say, like COVID and you want to sell your bond. For the most part, most people run into trouble there because now, let's say you've lost your job, you have uh, five million in a bond. So yes, you're happy getting the returns there, but you really need that five million to set things up, to get comfortable before you find your next opportunity. So how do you go about that? Very difficult for someone to sell a bond uh, as an individual, but through NABO, uh, we have our contacts, we have a brokerage community that we've uh, been working with for the last 10 years. And so it's easy for us to say, okay, you just send us, you want to sell this bond, we go to the market and directly sell that bond for you. And even if you are to sell your bond, you might actually, if you sell it as an individual, you get a significant discount. Uh, or uh, what will happen is, instead of thinking you get your 5 million back, you might have actually even get 4 million. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, so you've lost a whole million uh, from that price. But now us, we can try to get you the closest to the market price uh, where the bond is trading. Because again, bonds trade on a daily basis through the secondary markets. So our engagement through the secondary market is an advantage that I think now sort of trounce why someone ideally will go directly as opposed to because we can cover for you at any time. Yeah, oh wow. You're telling us how you can put 10,000 shillings in a money market fund for a considerable 
point of time. I think now you can check your phone and let us know those numbers you're crunching and tell us how it's making sense. Yeah, yeah I was, the numbers gave for real. Yeah. <laughs> these numbers sort of surprised me. I can just yeah. break it down slowly. Okay, yeah. um, please do. Yeah. So, so I was looking at a scenario where you start at 10,000 shillings. Well, this is what you do in your free time. You're just looking at scenarios. <laughs> 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 like, you know, just, just hit me. I'm like, this guy is sitting somewhere. And then it's just like, I like, wonder. In your free time, 20, exactly. And I had 10,000 more. <laughs> I wish carrier. I had started though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was looking at scenarios. So I'll take you to two to three scenarios. Yeah. So if you had the money market fund, okay. if you had 10K as your initial investment, and you've topped up every month ten, another 10K. So what will happen is within your first five years, you'll have about, with no withdrawals, you'll have about 820,000. By putting 10K per month regularly for five years? Yeah. You have how much? 820. That's plus the interest. Plus the interest. Plus everything. the interest. So you're, you're you're closing know. portfolio, or if you were to say, let me take everything out, you'll be given 820,000. But without the interest, the principal will be how much? It'll be about um, 120 times 4. The good thing is, uh, how some, we look at compounding is, okay. uh, any amount that you're generating, you'll have, your again, your contributions, which were your principal, but your interest also through compounding becomes, becomes now basically your principal because it's new money that's generating. So if you, you have your 10K, which say generates about say 120 shillings uh, within the month. And then within that period, then you have, the next month will be 10,120 now generating the new one, not the initial <coughs> 10,000. So you have the benefit of compounding over time. Yeah. So 820 in five years? In five, in five years. years. Okay. Yeah. Wow. In 10 years, you'll be 2.25 million. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a millionaire, like, don't, don't just, just think about a small amount of money every month over a period of time and you hit the millionaire tag. I will print a t-shirt. I have 2.5 million. Exactly, 2.5 uh, mic. Yeah. Yeah. And then within 15 years, you'll be 4.8 million. Wow. Yeah. So if you started working at, say, 24, say, yeah. 24, mm. But in 15 years time, you're almost um, 39. 39. Mm, They're about, you have 4.5 million shillings. You have 4.5. Assuming again, you, other things are, by maybe you're assuming if you're in the same career trajectory, you've maybe increased your income over time, mm. but you haven't changed. This is the same amount you started with 24 and just put in the same thing. Yeah. You've not moved it around. You've just yeah. left it. You've not bothered yourself about it. You don't even think why, of why it. Why do you teach these things in school? Why do you teach these things in school? Because why am, I, why am I knowing this in my mid-30s? My goodness. And then now in 20 years' time, your amount will be 9.2 million. Mm. Yeah. If you take that 9.2 million and put it in passive income. Yeah. You're sorted for You're life. You're generating at least 100K per month, yeah. not doing anything. You can actually just sit and be like, okay, let's say, you know how people now nowadays take career breaks so or you want to change your passion yeah. and things like that. No, at least with 100K, you could be like, okay, let me... I'm, at least I have a full emergency fund just to cater for that. Yeah, because you can yeah. you can actually even just chill and live your life. Exactly. You can just be like me, I'll be a guy who travels by road to Uganda. Yeah. <laughs> well, can I can write <laughs> my best seller book, book now. <laughs> <laughs> With 100k every month. Yeah. I mean, you, you can actually, you can... You're sorted. Yeah. You're sorted. You can live a comfortable live, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 When people are rejecting a bill, you're just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me go, let me go. You can reject for fun. <laughs> yeah. And then I did one more scenario I can share yeah. around. Um, so now in this case, I was looking at um, if you started with 100K. So basically a trust fund baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, We're yeah, a trust yeah, fund yeah, baby. Yeah, trust <laughs> baby. I think and it's also good to tell our audience it's possible to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, possible. It's, good. it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's possible. And um, say now you, you entered a job and uh, you could, let's say, ideally say just 50K. Let's, yeah. let's just use that assumption yeah. um, just for, just to get an idea. Yeah. Um, so within five years, you'll have 4.2 million. In the other ones, 10 you've done in five. What another mm. did in 10 you've done almost in five? Mm. In five. In 10 years, you'll have 11.4 million. In 10 years? Yeah. yeah. 11. Wow. 11.4 million shillings. Yeah. And then in 15, you'll have about 24 million, which 
again, now if you're using that example, uh, somewhere from 24 to 39, again. And at 24, you're getting what, about 200 and something per month? Yeah, you'll be getting close to, yeah, yeah they're about. About yeah. the about, yeah. to something to 300. And then you're 20, close to 47 to 48 million. It's about 500k a month. <laughs> Just to do nothing. And that's, <laughs> that's, you start with 100 and then you, even you can build up over time to just 50k a month. Within 20 years time, if you're 30, you're 50. Even if you're 40, uh, you're, you're 60. Yeah. You already have close to 50 million shillings in your account. I'm changing my prayer. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> give, you, give me one tender. <laughs> <laughs> give me one tender, I will give you one tender. I will give you one tender. I will give you one tender, God. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. That's actually, like the math is mathing. The math is mathing. Even if you're not thinking about it for yourself, let's yeah. say you're a family person, mm. you're thinking about it for your children. Yeah. If your child today is one years old, in 20 years time, mm. they can turn 20 and you give them 50 million. You tell yeah. them. Tell my son, here is your portfolio. Here is your portfolio. <laughs> Built from here Built now. From here yeah. now. Now we can talk about 100k a month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in fact, if they do the same thing you did, yeah. in fact, if you look at inflation yeah. and all that, yeah. they are doing even more. Yeah. Yeah. They doing They'll be doing more. more. Even more. Even at 20 years, you tell them half of your money, I have decided half of yours yeah. is building the same thing it built for me. Yeah. So you're not touching half of your monthly income. In literally 20 years' time, you'd have built for them, even, in fact, twice as much. Yeah. They will have 80 million. Mm. A hundred, Mike. Yeah. People talk about generational wealth. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that is, <laughs> I think what I've understood about investments is it requires a lot of patience and it requires discipline. Like, if you have those two, you'll definitely sort of succeed in your journey. Yeah. But you just have to have those But also two. knowledge and, and knowledge. insight. Because yeah. maybe people here who have their money stuck in some bad... Uh, Stuck in London, Malindi, bro. London, Malindi. <laughs> London, Malindi. <laughs> but only in some somebody, somebody, a friend of mine was being was told to go and uh, plant some tomatoes in Tavata, where he lost money. He bled badly. But you know, maybe he spent like four hundred thousand shillings. Yeah. If he knew, like maybe what Miano knows now, you don't have to like go and chase monkeys in Tavata waiting. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Get out of here! Making you know? scarecrows. You could just be <laughs> putting your leg up in the air and saying like four hundred k. What? How much do you make now? You know. Yeah. I think knowledge is powerful. Yeah. You know. And, but also I'm a bit worried about people who are coming from backgrounds that are, say, poor. Um, poverty can be cyclical, but I see this way as a way of breaking it, you know, with this type of knowledge, that even assuming that you have, like, say, many dependents, like you have a lot of black tax, you can actually create a black, a black tax portfolio. <laughs> see, like, yes, I'm having <laughs> one million shillings, that money is to deal with uh, family emergencies. Deal with all of you. <laughs> all of you. <laughs> so just, yeah, yeah you know. I don't know whether that is something that you can do. Say, okay, so my parents are old and they don't have any income, so I'm going to create some portfolio. Every month, just their M-Pesa line, they just get, tit -tit -tit, they get. Is that possible? Yeah, I think it's possible. We have certain clients, uh, like one, they're quite young, but they're looking at, uh, they have a project and they're also looking at traveling and one for the education of a young child. So you see, those are three different portfolios that you're looking at. And then now you can, build that up and reduce that stress. I know like um, black tax, I've had you guys mention your past episodes around it being sort of quite constraining on some individuals. Mm -hmm. So you can ease that constraint from your family and ease it by, yeah, building a portfolio. You can just do even this one I mentioned for 10K. Yeah. Yeah, and you just put 10K every month. And whenever those needs come, let's say your uh, schooling, uh, your relatives, children, mm -hmm. you, you put, pick it from the pot and uh, and doesn't have to affect you where you you're straying what do i do with my monthly income i have my family who are asking of me i have my aunts and my uncles also asking of me how do i deal with that that can ease that burden because again what you've talked about is knowledge mm -hmm. it's understanding that the same what i've realized especially in the era that we live in the same thing that the super rich can access yeah we can access now. Yeah, yeah. We can access. It's no longer a secret. Like it's it's a boardroom thing within a sports club. These are the old men discussing yeah. these things. That's the investments. Mtu um, Amtani is not like Mtu Amtani can discuss these things as well, and they can come together. And you and certain portfolios, you don't even have to come together as an individual. You can come together as a charmer. 
instead of doing the merry-go-round, which I think sometimes are not too helpful in my view, because it's you're not compounding the money. What you're doing is you're borrowing you're, money. It's you're the three money. of us. Yeah, we're just lending money yeah. because the three of us are doing 10k, 10k, 10k. Then I'll receive my 30k after the third month. You'll do like that. But again, I'll have a lump sum there, but I'll still pay it off again. Mm. So I'm not really growing. Yeah. But if I, I was investing that in a simple money market fund, then you compound that over time. Think about as like some charmers can do significant. They can do that 100K that I mentioned and then contribute, let's say, 50K together. So think about like in the next 10, 20 years, they have almost close to 50 million. Yeah. What can they do with 50 million? They can do projects. They can educate each child within the charmer, within that um, charmer. They can do so much more. So again, uh, it just starts with you know, small steps, small steps, and just maintaining that discipline over time. One of my friends' dad in their chama, they <coughs> built um, an estate in Ruru. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's their chama project. They went yeah. and bought land and built massive bungalows. I have a friend of mine also there, they're in a chama. Your entry is 1.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> they're an investment chama. Okay. So they're, they're about, I think, about 15 of them. Yeah. These guys are building and buying property every other two, three months. They're just like this, like this. So for me, investment chama, makes sense. Mm. But a chama to Petitia Chums, mm. that's money you'll eat. After three months, you're like, it is now my time <laughs> to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sacrificing I've been too much. Because <laughs> if, you if you are telling me I'll get that 30k and then invest in something instantly, mm. maybe there is a difference. But investment chama for me is that one, 1.5 mic entry. Mm. So when you come and join the Toyota later 1.5 million every month, I'm like, ah, 1.5 million entry point. Yeah, and every Lord, month that's what you're putting help in. Help your son so we are, we are capable. <laughs> Lord, help your son. Oh my God. So I, I yeah. see where I see, and then they come and talk to people like this as yeah. a chaba. Uh, yeah, exactly. So they call these guys in a room, they're 15 yeah. guys like, yeah. Sasa, where can we put our tombs, brother? So there is a, there's a lot, I, I believe there's a lot that can be done. Mm. So I, With 1.5 by 15, that's over 100 mic. Yeah. 100 mic you put in some serious investment portfolio. They become their own investment portfolio for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> they come here and they come as a, they come with weight. They don't come alone, they come with weight. This world can be unfair or fair, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Because how is it that somebody has 1.5 mic <laughs> as an entry point for investment, <laughs> while you out here, you've got to protest just to stay afloat. <laughs> like, just to stay afloat. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Mad this world. <laughs> so when it looks at some of these investments, so you are dealing on a com you're looking at so I'm I hear a lot of compounds. I'm guessing you like a lot of compound interest. Mm. That's something I'm sure every day when you're looking at the numbers, what's some of just just give us a, I mean, let's just have a dream. What's some of the best investments that you've looked at today? Let's just say today. One of those you're like today, if I had this amount of money and I put it here, I would have made good tunes. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um I think based, I've seen a lot of good investments in my time uh, that people could participate in. Um, I remember in 2017, the equities market in Kenya blew and did quite well. Like, I think you could just, uh, you know, you close your eyes, pick a stock and you'd still make money. <laughs> yeah. that as, I think as simple as that, also a bit difficult because uh, knowing exactly which one would give you the better return or not. But I think that time people were making um, even 30% plus. What? Yeah, 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 in 2017. That was Uhuru's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was when he just came into, no? That yeah. was the second, second term. term. That was the second term, yeah, 2013. Yeah, so that time the markets were fantastic. And then they sort of depressed over time because also they touched the next three years was COVID and then, you know, that followed through that. So that was a really good investment. Um, just in, within the NSE, if you just pick any of the stocks, you, you had a likelihood of making at least 20%, especially the big stocks, yeah. are likely of making 20% return. Um, I think right now we're also in a good environment. The last time we saw interest rates as high as this was as far back as I'd say maybe 2015. But I think as far back as 2011. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for example, a money market fund. Right now, money market fund, like our money market fund is doing around 16%. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, uh, I was looking at the numbers and someone was asking me around it, a potential investor. And just about two years ago, we were doing around 10. Mm -hmm. 
And that was the level. That was in fact, twelve was high. Twelve was high. I think it was only CIC who was doing twelve at the time. Uh, well. Yeah, so um, very few were doing around twelve. I'd say that. And and now we are in a situation where you're earning over sixteen percent. And now it's become sort of normalized. But that's a really high return. It is, it is a really high return. And it's uh, uh, inflation right now is around four point nine percent. So let's say assume five. So you're earning. 16 minus 5, you're earning 11% above inflation. So you're staying afloat. You always want to, the basic thing you always ask yourself is, is your return higher than inflation? So you always have to earn a higher return above inflation. And back in, uh, in the normalized time, a money market fund is probably giving you 10 to 12%. So again, it's a really good time to invest. Government bonds are now doing 17, 18%. They've been doing over, Maybe three years ago, they were doing about 10 to 12 yeah. percent, 10 to 12. So you're earning an extra five, six percent. An infrastructure bond, which is tax free, uh, can earn you, let's say, around 17 percent. If you look at that on a tax adjusted basis, that's over 20 percent. Percent. It's basically you're earning 20 percent. Then they deduct tax if they were, and then you're earning 17 percent net return that comes to your pocket. That's a really high return. So, and you're not leaving the, the boundaries of your country. Uh, yeah, and we've seen other investments. Uh, we've saw uh, some really good uh, investments like in other countries, like Egypt, we've seen some really good investments. Uh, and those ones, some even that we've invested in have gone 50 plus percent. What? In Egypt? Yeah. I've even yeah. choked. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Even, even some, uh, I remember there was a time they were doing treasury bills and um, it could be as this such three bills. You're investing for six to 12 months and you're getting 30%. In Egypt? In Egypt. He and I are about to become best friends, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and they are about yeah. to become best friends. Yeah. Whenever I say, like, bro, they're going to get up by 40%. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Means so are you, you're you telling me? Mike, yeah. You'd be getting 400K in six months. That's madness. That's 400K in six months. Yeah. So now it'd be annualized. So it'd be 200, 200, but it's still good for, it's still for like crazy. 400K a year. Because yeah. next year you have one point. There's no amount of investment you can do that will give you that in that short of it. Yeah. yeah. So Mimi, I'm putting my legs up in Ongeche village. Yeah. <laughs> and earning Signing. my 40%. <laughs> Uh, or thirty yeah. percent in what? Egypt while I'm in the village, <laughs> or, or anywhere else in the part of the world. Even if I had a hundred k, that is hundred and forty k. Yeah. But let yeah. me ask you now. Yeah. Wow. Do you think then it is intentional that the mass media puts our mind in terms of very limited options of investment? Is it? Is it? Is it a conspiracy theory? Is it a scheme <laughs> to keep that us That is poor? not a spite your intellect. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, for I'm wondering. I'm wondering <laughs> because yeah. all the all the advertisement I see, yeah. mishamba to mashamba, mashamba, mashamba. That's it's like Kenya is whether it's my again in the morning, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know, whoever it's, yeah. it's fifty by hundred, fifty yeah. by hundred. Oh, but nobody's shamba, talking about shamba, shamba, shamba. this type of investment yeah. options. What's yeah. going on? I think the commercial enterprise, if I look at it, is catered towards um, the people who have the money to reach the masses. And if you look at, let's say, Mashamba, it's the guys who are paying for advertising. And they are paying to, be, uh, to discuss this on radio shows, TV advertisements. And, and it's also sort of perpetuating what you've learned when you were young. You know, land is... It's, we use the word tangible. Like sometimes the thing is why someone might not invest in that 30% opportunity in Egypt is because like, Sioni, Sioni, si shiki. I want to walk and put a beacon on it. <laughs> and this is mine. I'll put a beacon in the air. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is mine. Like this is mine. You can show someone, let's say you have a land here in Ruaka, yeah. uh, somewhere in Ruaka. Yeah. You can take your friends, your buddies and be like, this portion of mine, this one acre is mine. It's, it's more uh, admirable somehow uh, and sort of strikes the ego than, or strokes the ego than, oh, I have uh, some investment in Egypt uh, giving me 30, you know, percent or something. But realistically, I think it's because of, it's pushing sort of the same sort of status quo that we're used to. And that tends to continue. And also it's hard 
for people to embrace change. Yeah. I think uh, it's easy to sell land because you understand you land from maybe your bringing. We have a shamba, we have a house here. I can, we can do agriculture, we can jenga uh, uh, flats, you know. But now if you tell someone, uh, you can move to Egypt and get a higher return. You can go to Uganda and get a certain return. You can go even beyond the boundaries of Kenya. I mean, Africa and go to the US while still being here through, let's say, ups and through different investment uh, opportunities to invest in the US, for example. Very few people will be open to it. They like the idea, but now when, but now when it comes to putting money into it, there's a bit of too much caution. Again, driven by uh, sort of old thinking and how we've grown up, which I don't fault anyone. Mm -hmm. But now what, why knowledge is so important is we have now uh, opportunities or platforms like this one. We have uh, so many YouTube uh, uh, sort of channels that uh, educate people like, hey, there are more investments than land. There's more investments than your own country. You can diversify. You can still have your land, but you can also diversify. Why buy 10 acres while you can have, why two acres is enough, and now the eight acres worth of money, you can invest in something else. So again, I think over time, given now, we're sort of having a, what we call a decentralization of information where different people are coming in. You can have my, you, I can have my own view and show it to the masses through you know, my platforms or anyone else can do that. That will help over time people now embrace change and embrace these new opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Bro, I'm still at the fact that I could have went through <laughs> 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 Me, you left me. I've heard all you said. It was fantastic stuff, but man. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's decentralize the masses. Yeah. I'm still like, that one out of 40%. Yeah. On that note, you've come to the conclusion of our why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you the decisions I would have made if I had not. <laughs> <laughs> no, the decisions I'm making from today. That's, that's the better. I think that's the better. And the decisions I'm making from today. Mm. After you're becoming my best friend. I don't think you understand. <laughs> you are becoming my BFA. <laughs> anyway, man, that's what man's perspective is. We have moments like this. Light bulb moments yeah. where you realize, where? Yeah. Yani. So we want you to make better decisions. So make sure you are making those better decisions. That's why we have these conversations here on Man's Perspective Africa. We are part of the decentralization <laughs> of information. And thank you so much, Charles, for just expanding our minds and allowing us to see opportunities where there seem not to be. Remember, we are coming to you. We've been coming to you, rather, from Two Rivers Mall Center Building here at Nabo Capital. We were talking about investments, talking about finances, how you can make your finances better and make better decisions for your farm. Obana. Silence is golden, speech is silver. I am the golden voice god son cheat on love my name is danny shodongo and let us know what you think give us your feedback the hashtag is manspective africa subscribe to our youtube channel like our pages it's manspective africa across all social media channels my name is danny shodongo follow me and follow cheat on love until next time adios and we want you to be a money 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 man adios